YouTube, YouTube, what's going on? Trey back again, hit you with a video. Now this video right here is 21 questions, part six. And I wanna thank everyone who been participating in the 21 questions for the last six weeks. And a uh, big shout out to you all, give you all a self pat on your back. And uh, thank you for the questions, whether they was uh, made me think, you know, gave me uh, a little something to go deeper in, or just a question just asking about relationship or anything, you know, that's what this, uh, 21 questions is about it's about uh communicating dialoguing and basically you know what i'm saying trying to help each other come to some kind of conclusion to whatever our problems may be so i'm not going to waste no time we're going to jump right in it question number one demi demi beso 714 i think i said your name right hmm 100 percent all of your videos expose your gift deep thinker analyzer you always make sense when and where all sense is lost you will still find it. Your true calling, psychiatrist, therapist, group, or individual. The world so needs you. You were born to set it straight. You were born to help this crazy world stay focused and move forward despite all the madness. What a big job. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. And also, uh, Demi uh, Besso, thank you for that wonderful question also. You know... It's just like you're trying to make a way out of no way. You're trying to find a needle in a haystack, you know, because I feel, I feel, you know, in my heart that anything can be accomplished if a person, you know, have the mindset to overcome whatever his challenge is, whether it's a job, whether it's uh, starting a new career, whether it's uh, trying to make your marriage work or whatever else. You know, if you put enough uh, energy and uh, muscle up enough energy, you can get anything uh, accomplished. So, um Yes, it is also a big job also, you know, trying to deal with so many different people, different personalities, different from different people from all parts of the world. I mean, you have people from China, you have people from Germany. So you have different people, different cultures and beliefs. And, you know, it is kind of hard, you know, even though it gets better over time, you know, the more you practice with anything, uh, repetition, you get better. But it's kind of hard at first trying to appease and please everybody, you know, because everybody don't don't want to hear the same thing. Everybody don't like the same thing. But I have to keep it real with myself and give it to you the best way that I know how. And, you know, and if it's not real with them myself, I can't really say it or stand on it. But thank you also for that wonderful question. And, yes, I do consider myself a deep thing. I, you know, I, you know, that's what I do a lot. I guess all Aquarius do that. We really look deeply into things. And sometimes we get lost in our thoughts and our meditation. But also, uh, Demi Bessie. Best so thank you for that wonderful question. Number two, Co. What does a mother to do? Pay pay for me and my husband and children to have a nice home. Pay nice pay cash nice school district. Safe community. Pay for new vehicles. I am in the truest sense a woman that loves her family. I will lay my life down to go to war for them. I'm always keeping them first but now i am treated like crap they all just want money all i want is family and love i am hurt i cry continually they won't help me clean up or do anything in our beautiful in our beautiful place i was hurt and paid well left a little disabled but i am strong i see to me no one has to help me i just wanted love for my husband and children a broken soul well i'm very sorry to hear that also and i could tell just by the way that you worded that sentence that you know you're very emotional and you're going through a lot of emotions right now because the way the sentence was written you know and uh that's understandable because we all you know get emotional and we might skip a few words or whatever but back to the original question that you stated uh that your husband is basically treating you like crap now after you done laid down this wonderful foundation for them to have a good life you and your children also and the fact that also that your children would take it a step further to treat you like crap along with the husband so this is what i advise you to do number one I wish you would have said the kid's age because if they're uh, 18 or older, they're, they're not kids, you can uh, put their ass out if they want to be so grown and make them go get it on their own. And your husband, if he can't treat you like the queen that you are or the way that you want to be treated, I suggest you uh, tell him, and I'm sure you already told him, if he can't do that, then you need to let him go because what would happen, you know, you always end up getting it to it all the time and, you know, you never know. You might have a heart attack or you might... Um, get sick because stress stress will kill you also so don't let this man or these children who don't really you know have respect for you and you don't have respect for no one i, I figure also that that coincides with love so like they don't have no love and respect for you and they they're not uh showing you your true worth you know even though you did uh do your best to take care of them and lay down this wonderful foundation they're not appreciative of them so my advice to you it depends on how old these children is you know, if they're young, 
you make them obey you. You know, they ain't got to, they ain't got to uh, like it or love it or whatever, but you make them um, obey you under your roof if they're young. But if they're over 18, you can close that door on them and tell them to get it how they live. You know, not trying to be mean, but making them stay on their own. And for your husband, if he don't want to compromise with you, let them go. You know, drop that zero and get you a hero. But don't sit around, you know, just because... Uh, you don't you don't work toward this uh goal because a lot of things we work for in life would never come true and a lot of things just not meant to last you know forever and always you know it'd be wonderful if it did but at the same time you have to understand it also that you're mature mature and grown enough now to know that it's time to move on and just let that guy go and uh you know just you know lick your wounds and you'll get better with uh, you get better over time but you're never going to get better if you constantly reminded by these same people treating you like, uh, how can I say this shit every day? You know, excuse my French, but that's the truth. So you don't need that. So if your kid's old enough, make them be on their own. If your husband don't want to treat you right, leave his ass and you go take care of yourself. And uh, just because you're a little disabled or whatever else, trust me, <laughs> any man in his right mind would be glad to have a woman who's a go-getter and who's about her business. So you stay blessed and thank you for that wonderful question. Number three, Roshan Barrett. Hello, Mr. Trey. My question that I am asking you have, I have asked other men before, but I would like your opinion, please. I always hear men say that good women are hard to find, but when a good woman comes along, the men are usually the one with the issues. For example, if a woman is willing to pay her own way when it comes to the first date, a man automatically thinks something is wrong. No, there's nothing wrong. Maybe if the date doesn't go well the first time, at least he can't say I wasted my money or she just used me. I could go on, but I'm sure you understand what I am saying. A lot of times I believe that if a man has been left scarred by another woman, no matter who comes along, that woman will be walking in the last woman's shadow. Therefore, it's not her fault. It is his problem. Please tell me what you think. Thank you. <laughs> what else? A lot of questions. This is what I think also. Uh, number one, it deals with the person because we all done had people in our past and treated us bad you know done, done used us and done manipulated us in some kind of way but you know a lot of people can let that go a lot of people can't see the thing is with people is they don't know how to differ differentiate what is best for them and what they really need and what they really you know want you know it's, it's different between having wants and need it's it's one thing to want somebody to treat you right and uh to be there for you but it's another thing to demand that and need that from there and see when you need some a need is way more greater than a want so a lot of people don't want to be uh happy a lot of people don't want to move on to a better future they want to lay in the past with what you call uh uh lay in your lay in your uh shallow waste if you will which means that a lot of people want to just soak in their misery you know they don't want to let go of the past they constantly remind it uh or reminded themselves of how things used to be and a lot of them are just so heartbroken that they refuse to go on and refuse to to love again also but i believe that uh you know time heals all things but also it all depends on what the person want also and you also said that uh that if a woman is willing to pay her own way when it comes to the first day a man automatically think something is wrong some men do i don't think it me i look at it like that i'm like well okay well she's she's a compromising person if we go if you was to go on a date with a guy and you pay your first uh and you pay for the first meal you know a real man will look at that like okay this is a woman showing me that she's not with me for my money so you have all the right uh qualities from what i from what i read and from what i seen but it just evidently you're uh exposing this or telling this to the wrong guy because not everybody's the same just like every female is not the same every male is not the same so if uh, a person don't want to let go of the past, then what thing you got to do is let them go also until they can heal from that. Because they would never be able to give you all of them if they constantly live, living in the past. You see what I'm saying? You can't move forward to Thursday if you're still on Tuesday, if, if, if you understand me. So, uh, Roshan Barrett, thanks for that question. Number four, Raphael Harwick. How do you handle stress? Because lately I've been feeling very stressed out dealing with family making fun of me because I am still a virgin at 22. And I have the stress of school. Thank you in advance for answering my question. I greatly appreciate it. Well, you know, I handle stress in a lot of different ways. Me personally, uh, I might go work on, I might go work on my car, I might go work on my dog, I might go uh, mow my yard since Jose don't want to help me no more, or I might just, you know, just just take a ride somewhere. I might go shopping. I I got different ways of handling stress. You know, I might sit down and meditate. Or I just might just listen to some smooth R&B or something like that. It's different ways you can release, you know. But one thing you do not want to do is let it all bottle, bottle up. Because one thing happened with pressure is what? Pressure busts pipes. So you want to find uh, 
some kind of release valve in your life, if you will, that you can let go of this pressure and this steam that's been building up. And also, you know, family family can be the greatest people in your life. They can also be the worst people in your life. But you have to understand they are human beings also. You know, I tell people all the time, just because you share the same blood as somebody don't mean you're family. Because family, a lot of times, be the one steal from you. A lot of, a lot of times hurt you, breaking your house, or just uh, ruin your relationship, being messy on Facebook or whatever else. So don't don't worry about if they making fun of you and all this and that. You focus on school, get yourself right, and then when you're ready to have sex one day, uh, when whenever that may be, that's on you to decide. Can't nobody decide. I mean, can't nobody decide that for you. And if they're making fun of you, then you just realize that look, they're not for you. Then you know what I'm saying. That don't mean necessarily that they do not love you. They just don't understand what it is you know you're doing because you're actually trying to go somewhere in life. You're actually trying to stand for something. You're actually trying to uh, satisfy those sexual desires in order to gain a good career and, you know, trying to move forward in life, which a lot of people should do that. And if they did, a lot of them would wind up in the shape they did. So don't worry about them people. You just keep going on, stay strong. And one day, them same people that was laughing at you going to be begging you for a handout or saying how sorry they was because a lot of them might have AIDS. Not wishing AIDS on your family or anything like that. But, you know, it's too many diseases out here now to be talking about uh how promiscuous and how uh how many girls or how many men somebody's sleeping with that right there is a, uh will get you in a hospital or in a graveyard very quick with a disease so don't worry about that you stay blessed uh raphael harvick and thank for that question number five victoria m hello trey i have two quick questions first what do you believe are signs that a relationship is emotionally and spiritually healthy number one when you uh feel like you can't breathe without that person you know what i'm saying like that song jay holiday i can't breathe you know like you, you suffocate without them you know like they're everything to you you know they're they're your morning morning sunshine you know when when even when they go to work you still want to call them you still want to talk to them you still want to come up to the job like you can't be separated that's when it's really real healthy when you just can be around each other and not do nothing you know you can be sitting uh on your computer they can be doing their thing on a pad or watching tv y'all just sit there and enjoy each other company with no argument or anything you know that's mean that's when you don't want a core that's when it's the most healthy and spiritual now you said second i am currently dating a man who i am not physically attracted to should physical attraction be important when you are dating someone yes it should be because if if you already committed that in your heart and your mind that you're not physically attracted to this person then why are you with that person because you figure this person is a good person or you don't want to hurt their feelings. It's a reason why you're with this person if you're not physically attracted to the person because I, you have to understand something. You know, physical attraction is just as strong as as that uh, emotional attraction, as that uh, desire to be with someone. So if you don't find this person attractive in the long run, that's going to hinder your relationship because at the end of the day, you're going to want to get the quote-unquote cozy with a person you know what i'm saying if you're not attracted to them it don't matter how much they do for you or how good they treat you you're not going to want to be intimate with them and if you are intimate with them you're forcing it or you're faking it because you stated that you're not attracted to this person so number one what you have to do victoria is ask yourself this why are you with this person is it because the person a good has a good heart done been used in the past or just treats you real well but if you already know this then you need to be honest with yourself and um uh, you know, and set boundaries, if you will, you know, with this person. So this person won't end up getting hurt if this person is loving you like you say that uh, that's what it is. And then you also said, uh, I just started dating this man and I've known him for a while as we both currently attending college. That's good. In December, I am going to travel and meet his family in Nigeria. Now, you be careful over there in Nigeria now. I would appreciate to hear your advice, Trey. Thanks. But anyway, uh, well, you be careful first of all traveling because them Nigerians do not play, you know. And big shout out to all them also. But at the same time, like I told you, you was honest and you said that you're not physically attracted to this person. So one thing I want you to do is ask yourself, why are you trying to be with this person? Why are you going over there to see this person? Are you going to make yourself be attracted to them? Those are questions that you have to ask, you know. And uh, if you want to give me a updated response back with that. I'll be glad to include it if I can in the next 21 questions, if you will. But um, from what I see, you know, this is something that you have to deal with because you stated that you're not physically attracted to the person. But I can't see why you, you would be with the person if you're not attracted to them. You know, I don't understand that. But anyway, Victoria, thank you for that question. You have a good day. Number six, Creative Journeys 036 LJ. Hello, Trey. Thanks for the time, for taking out the time out of your busy life to answer a que our questions. 
I rarely have time to watch TV. I usually listen to your videos in the background while working, and I can usually be heard literally laughing out loud. But I must say that your heartfelt videos are more informative and entertaining than most of the million dollar content being produced. I would like to hear your opinion regarding the Harvey Weinstein controversy. His behavior is absolutely wrong, but does it seem as if he is taking the blame for the entire industry? Yes, he is. They had to have a sacrificial lamb. You know, after all, you see this in October. Go back and look at October for the entertainment industry and watch how many people come out with scandals. Watch how many people wind up dead that month. And watch how many things just go down in Hollywood in the month of October. That's the month, you know, but that's dealing on something else. But I want I want to uh, just pick your brain for a second and challenge you to go back, you know, and research over things that happen in the industry, whether it's movie or music, just entertainment, period. And watch how strange things happen in October. You know, that's a, that's a sign right there. Now, he's been, uh, hold on, I'm, I'm finished reading your question first. You said also that... Uh, I am certain that he is not the only top level executive who has sexual misconduct. No, they all have dirt on them, even the lower level ones. Many are calling this a watershed moment for the industry. But in order for that to happen, would they not need to expose more misconduct or, or executives and the actors and actresses who may have benefited in addition to those who were harmed? Or if they did that, would the entire industry collapse? Be blessed, LJ. Yes, the whole industry would collapse and there'd be a lot of people winding up dead, winding up stinking, like I always say, because one thing they're not going to do is expose their true hidden hand, if you know what I mean. They're not going to expose all the darkest secrets. They're only giving you a little bit because what happened with Weinstein, like I said in the last video, is that evidently he made somebody mad. He pissed somebody off that had equal power to him or greater power than him. And one thing, just like I said, like the mob, like the mafia, the Costa Nostra, one thing they do not one thing they do not like and tolerate, no matter how good of a soldier you is, or whether you're a boss or whatever, you've been in the game 20, 30, 40 years, is a sloppy person, which means not the way you dress, but if you start uh messing up, you leaving uh you leaving red flags everywhere. You're getting people to talking about what's going on. And that's when they will whack you, which mean in Holly I mean in, in the mob kill you in Hollywood. They won't uh necessarily kill you at first. Depends on who you are and your status, but trust me, they will financially ruin you where you can't not do anything else. And true, uh, if you want these top executives like Weinstein, you will have enough money to be comfortable with, but at the same time, your reputation is, is done with and you will never work in this town again. But trust me, if if they wanted to clean out Hollywood, it wouldn't be Hollywood because everything would collapse and it would be way more than Harvey Weinstein. You know, it'd be not just, not just uh, white people, it'd be black and white, all races. Uh, Asians, everybody taking falls because everybody participate in these uh, rituals that goes on in Hollywood. I'm going to say it just like that. And uh, I want you to go back and check over the month of October, things that have been happening from from the beginning of time, if you will. But you could do a 10-year span, 20-year span. Just go back and look at all the strange things happen around the month of October. That's what that's all you have to do in uh, Creative Journey, LG. Thanks for that uh, wonderful question. Number seven, Sharon G. Hi, Trey. What's your opinion about males that feels that feel as if they don't have a legal say so about a female aborting their fetus baby. Example, the female goes through with the abortion or wants to, but the male wants the child to be born. Thanks in advance for your answer. Sharon Dree from Raleigh, North Carolina. I feel this is just a huge double standard. It's just like women can dress like sluts and whores and don't nobody post say, say nothing about them. They can wear anything to church, don't nobody post say nothing about them. They can walk around with all their breasts showing, cleavage showing, but basically number the bra on, don't nobody post say nothing. And also, it's it's like it's just so convenient for women to even mess over guys. Whereas you have some guys paying child support for children that's not even theirs, and then guys that really want a baby by these women, they don't want to have their baby because whether the guy's not handsome enough or he don't have enough money, and these women will run to these abortion clinics, get these cow, I mean, get these child, not cows, get these uh, children yanked out of them, and and what the abortion clinic needs to start doing is giving all these women New York Yankees hat because the way they be yanking these babies, they ought to be part of the Yankees uh, baseball team. But on the real though, and see that's the problem that we have right now. They ought to give men. Just as much equal choice as as the woman. Because you know why? What if that woman dies? We ain't going to talk about her just giving the child away or aborting it. What if she dies? That man going to be responsible for that child. Now, what if she don't die or whatever else, and then the man don't want to be with her, he going to have to pay for the child. So why should he have the, a right to say whether the child should be born or not? And if he don't want the child, just like if she don't want it, she can get rid of it. She can send it off somewhere to the state, to foster homes or group homes, or she can go kill it. 
why shouldn't a man have the same choice? You see what I'm saying? And that'll stop a lot of these women from living off these kids. Because the reason why a lot of them have these children, because number one, they dumb and they uneducated. And they're not going to sit up here and take care of these kids, right? And they use these kids to get food stamps on, Section 8 on, and all that on. I know I made a lot of people mad right then. If I did, you, 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 you're the one I'm talking about. You're guilty. You can hate it or love it. Who cares? But at the same time, men should have equal right and in, 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 in a choice as a woman. And that'll stop all these women from putting these guys on child support. That'll stop all these women from trying to sleep with NBA players. I'm going I'm to cheat on you with a basketball player. That bullshit. That'll stop a lot of stuff. Give men as much right as a woman when it comes to choosing a life for this child. You know, and I'm sure most of these men would not want them babies, uh, would not want their child killed. And it's amazing how uh, a mom, you know, can, 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 can open her legs and knowing it's a living, uh, a living human inside of her and have that child killed i don't understand that you know because i know the woman carried a child because we know that just like we know that the man don't have to carry it you know but at the same time when it comes to legal matters and, and taking somebody money and having them in jail for something you know maybe he didn't want we ought to uh revamp the whole issue so i hope i answered your question and thank you also for that wonderful question number eight adores Aaliyah since 94 question has anyone ever told you that you resemble paul wall yes everybody say that just because um uh very high yellow looking and, you know they say they're all about all high, high yellow people but one thing about paul wall paul wall is white i'm not white but uh anyway big shout out to paul wall met him a few times got number love for the boy he part of he part of the homie i'm gonna tell you something about paul wall too paul wall is more really and more blacker than a lot of these black people since uh, people want to climb out there. And I'm not saying that you said that as a joke, but a lot of people do. I just know I, see, I consider it a compliment because at least he's known. You know what I'm saying? But just because a person look a certain way, they automatically say, well, you look like this person right here, which I don't care, you know, because, hey, I love my skin color. Now, you also say, love your show found you when Steve Harvey got exposed in February. Be blessed. Yes. Uh, me and old Steve. Yeah, Steve's still mad about that. And uh, that's why he had my voice on his radio show and he hurry up and took it off the radio show because uh, I'm about to, you know, call my lawyer like, hey, you do you doing some uh, some copyright stuff over that you're supposed to be doing. You can't use my voice on your show now unless you contact me. I ain't use your voice. I was, I was just telling the truth about you. But, yeah, you know, big and big shout out to Steve Harvey also with his new show, Steve. You know, they still be trying to throw shots on the radio talking about, yeah, Steve, uh, Junior, uh, yeah, Steve, they, they didn't think that you was going to blow up, Steve. They didn't think about the show and all this. I know who he, he's referring that to, but it's all good, though. Like I said, you know, I got the location mixed up, but I did not get the concept mixed up. That's what they should have talked about. But anyway, it's all good. Bless bless him, bless Steve, and also bless you, Aaliyah. Thank you for that wonderful question. And big shout out to Paul Wall. Now, number nine. Mo Von R. Is a 46-year-old woman too old for a 20-year-old man? Well, number one, if you want the truth, uh, yeah, 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 46, 20, that ain't going to last right there because let me tell you something. I'm not trying to make you seem old. Now, about time, about time you get 60 years old, which is what, uh, 14 more years, this guy is going to be 34. So, about time you get uh, 66, this guy be only 40 years old, so you can do the math and see how that goes right there. But it also depends on the maturity of the person because, you know, people hook up for different reasons. You know, what's meant to be is meant to be. I'm not here to question that, but if you're a 46-year-old woman and you you looking, you know, for a 20-year-old man, unless that man is very mature because you might have him sitting home playing PlayStation games all day, playing Madden football and stuff, you know what I'm saying, still going to the park shooting with his hoops. Now, if you can deal with that, that's fine. That's on you. But in uh, all actuality, that's like a, you know, that's like a, a curveball. It could be a yay. It could be a nay. But at the same time, it depends on the maturity of the person. Just like you can have a 46-year-old woman who just like a damn child who want to go to the clubs with her daughter and everything like that. So it's all about the maturity of the person. So just to make it even and fair, because I don't uh, try to tell nobody who they should and who they cannot love. You know, that's on you to decide. But at the same time, it deals with the maturity of the person because you can have two 20 year old people and they can act like regular grown people older than 50, 60 years old. Or else you can have two 50 year old couples that act just like teenager kids fighting and bickering all the time. So think about that. And uh, Mo Von R, thank you for that question. Number 10, Karen G. Hey, Trey, an unmanned 8.5 ton Chinese Skylab is drifting through space. I heard about that. Scientists predict that it would crash to Earth between 1017 and 418. Impact point devastation unknown. My thoughts, 
it would likely veer off course or disintegrate in in Earth's atmosphere. What are your thoughts? I think it's a bunch of baloney because one thing about it, you need to understand something, uh, this thing that we call gravity. And also, if they can predict where uh, meteorites, so-called meteorites and asteroids is going to crash at, why can't they predict where this uh, 8.5 ton Chinese sky lab is going to crash at? You know, it's always something, just like the story with Chicken Little, it's always something to keep you in fear. You know, the sky is falling. It's always something falling from the sky. It ain't nothing fell from that sky yet. You know, nothing is going to fall from the sky. Look up, look in Genesis. You live under a firmament. Nothing is going to fall here. You know, as above, so below. You know, it's water below, it's water above. You know, <laughs> so for us to be worried about stuff like that, that's to keep you all focused on becoming a better person that you're supposed to become and to keep people and humanity on this planet in disarray, constantly looking over their head. When you shouldn't be looking up, you should be looking straight ahead because what's going to kill you and what's going to hurt you the most is something that's straight ahead of you. This stuff up there, that's none of our concern right there because let me tell you something. If it was so much, uh, how can I say this? This weather things they're doing, then why when they send certain things up, they have big weather balloons attached to it? You know, if it's so much gravity and all this, you know, elevation pulling people up and all this, why don't they have, uh, why they send these big old balloons up with it? You know, if it's gravity going to keep it up there. So, you know, this this world is, is not what it seems. And like I said, to make a long story short, they just to keep people in fear constantly looking over your heads because if you're living in fear you can never rise to your true potential that's why i don't even worry about that stuff you don't hear me even talking about it i talk about humanity issues you know things that goes on with people to people because that's that's where it, it should be at but everybody else is concerned about other things and that's good that you brought that up because i've i've been heard about that you know some years ago they was talking about that it's it just a recurrence of them trying to scare people put fear in people you know because uh 1021 done passed passed over uh y2k done passed 2012 done passed you know it's just something to keep you constantly in fear that's all but uh karen g thank you for that question number 11 christina sanders Hi, Trey. This world is so crazy that we live in, which means the majority of videos you make show the darker side of humanity. Yes, it does. Do you ever get overwhelmed by all the negativity and feel that you need a break? No, I don't. Because, you know, I feel that's one of my purposes here. And, you know, we all here for a specific purpose, you know. And every day it's not going to be peaches and cream because I can deal with just as much dark as I can light, you know, even though I prefer light. But at the same time, I know that there's a dark side and that's why I speak on that and I speak on the light side also because you cannot have one without the other. This whole world is duality. You know, like the yin and the yang, male and female. In order to in order to have balance, you have to deal with both. Now, you also say, how would you recommend we unplug from all the bad news and recharge our mind and spirits? Sometimes you just got to cut the pads off. Sometimes you got to cut the laptops off, cut the cell phones off, get off of YouTube, Facebook, Worldstar, whatever you own. Sometimes you got to go out in nature and see. And that's what this Internet and this technology age has done. It has, has separated people from being one. You know, whereas the only way you could be able to hear from somebody or see somebody is what? Is you go see them. You know, now you can see them on live streams and it takes you further away from the person. You feel what I'm saying? And what would end up happening for those who can't see that and going on that and understand that concept is that, you know, you will grow further apart from people instead of growing closer. We think technology is making us closer. No, it's not. It's making us grow further apart because the way it should be is supposed to be self interaction where we see each other and we and we communicate on that level, you know, but some people can use it to their advantage. Some people can't. But you also said, uh, and that was a good point you made, do you get overwhelmed by all the negativity? Yes, I do sometimes, but really I know how to balance it because I'm an empath. You know, I feel people pain. For some reason, I do. I ride down uh, the highway, you know, and see a dead animal, I have to turn the other way. It just hurts my heart that much. I don't know why I've always been like that when I was young. Uh, like when I used to walk uh, home from school sometimes, see a dead dog, you know, I used to get like a... Uh, a shovel or something and try to bury the thing didn't even know it because it just, it, just, it just it just hurts my heart but at the same time i know as a man i know that i have to speak on to to, to uh how can i say this awake people you know it ain't, it ain't all about celebrities and what they're doing it's not all about uh what uh this crooked government doing it's about everything you know but more what i focus on 
is human interaction. You know, what do how do we tr treat each other? You know, whether it's good or bad or funny. That's that's where my thing is. But yes, it does get overwhelming sometimes, but I stay focused and I stay prayed up, you know, I, and I meditate every day. So that what gives me the energy, you know, because it, it takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of you just to do these videos. You know, you have to go somewhere and recharge. You can ask somebody that. That's why people have to take vacations, you know, because you cannot do it all the time. It, it'll take, it'll, it'll drain you. But thank you anyway, Christina Sanders, for that wonderful question. Number 12, Danny Haynes. How was it for you growing up to be Native American and black in Creole? Don't forget Creole. And will you ever get married? Yes. Thanks and God bless and love you. Well, it it was uh, how can I say this? It was easy, like when I was in, you know, elementary school, middle school. But once I got to high school, I started seeing, you know, like how they uh, how the light skinned people started hanging with each other, the dark skinned people started hanging with each other. You know, you had like three different shades. You had the the dark dark people hanging with each other. You had the brown skinned people hanging with each other. Then you had the light skinned people hanging with each other. But me, I hung around everybody. You know, that's, maybe that's why I had this slang that I have, you know. I hung around anybody. It, it didn't matter if you're cool, you're cool. Whether you're white, black, Asian, Chinese. I had them all friends. One of my best friends was a uh, was a white guy. You know, it, it, it don't it don't matter what color you are. You feel me? But at the same time, yes, it, it was kind of kind of hard. Because when you tell people who you are, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're How are you going to tell somebody what they are? And, 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 and people get mad because just the fact you know who you are. You know your genealogy. You know your ancestry. You know if you're a, a Choctaw Indian. You know if you're a... Uh, black you know if you're creole you know but to a lot of people they don't even they don't even understand it oh you come from here or you come from there how you gonna tell somebody where they come from when when their when their history is already right there right there in front of you but anyway uh thank you for that wonderful question danny haynes and yes you know when the right person you know come along then hey you know be, be like jagged edge said meet me at the altar but anyway thank you for that wonderful question number 13 marquia simone can you do a video about why black men hate us so much? Nobody is perfect, but they really seem to to give two fucks about us. Damn. But anyway, Mark here, that's a very good response right there. And I get a lot of negative uh, response from uh, a lot of uh, darker skinned guys, black guys, you know, because a lot of them don't want nobody telling them nothing. A lot of them feel that they can throw this color issue around. They throw it around just as much as white guys throw it around. And yes, I'm talking, talking to them right now, you know. And for them to sit up here and say that white people is so racist, this, no, a lot of black people been racist to me also, you know, my own people, you know, they've been racist to me just because I'm a, a lighter version than them. But that's fine, though. That's fine, though, because I don't care because it it, it doesn't matter. You know, you're going to I'm, I'm going to be proud who I am, what I am, regardless of what if anybody think. I don't care if I have to stand alone in this world. You know, I've been doing it my whole life. You know, I'm going to do me. I just suggest them do them and why they why they hate so much this goes back from slavery you know to where the black man and the black woman was destroyed well you had the house negro the field negro and well you had master bed wench who was snitching on the slaves trying to run away who basically was sucking up the master to get all the benefits we still have those same people today we still have people working on plantations we still have people not realizing that in a way, you're free, but in a way, you're still slaves, and it's, and it's for everybody. You know, it's just not one group of people. You know, it's systematic racism and systematic enslavement all across this world. That's where the 1% rules the 99%. Now, you go on something else, but and, and uh, a, lot, a lot of guys just don't refuse to stand up and back their women. And, and the reason why a lot of women don't respect respect the black man is because they feel that he is uh, inferior. He is weak because of what he has let other races of people do and that's quite naturally true but when i speak on it when somebody else speak on it oh it's an issue right then but if i show you the pictures in my family they just as dark as the pe people in your family so i'm gonna speak on whatever in my heart you know regardless but when people uh say things like oh why yo high yellow but saying this and that man i just i just don't even worry about them comments i concentrate on the people who want to hear some people who i can talk with who i can learn something from also but at the same time um uh, the black man do that because you know just been destroyed as, as a family as a household and, it's, and it has a lot to do with slavery it has a lot to do with feminism it has a lot to do with a lot of different things going on until that black man and black woman come back and stand on that square uh, stand on that square you know what i'm saying to mean to stand on that square to get themselves correct and, and in order they're gonna continue this you know but they don't don't nobody want to hear the truth that's the problem right there so i'm gonna leave it right there before i say too much but uh thank you for that wonderful uh question Marquia Simone 
14, Mona K. Who, whomever is stalking you, Trey, and giving you the thumbs down all the time, just want you and know that they can't have you. Well, that's true also. Like I said, I wouldn't even go acknowledge it. I'm not going to spend too much time on now. Look, let me tell you something. I don't care about if somebody put a thumbs down on it because either way it go, YouTube honors that. You know, so they wasting their time, you know. And even if YouTube didn't honor that, it must be something about me where they have to come to a video, no matter if I'm saying this right here. They're going to thumb down. They just show you how miserable people is. They just show you that you getting up under their skin. You know, so if they take out the time to do all that, the hell with them. God bless them. You feel what I'm saying? I don't care. Because, as you can see, I don't speak on it. I, I, I keep it moving. The only reason why I'm speaking on it now is because you asked a question. But one thing about it, my uh my true uh followers, my uh subscribers, which I don't have followers. I have family. They see through that. Because a lot of people done sent me uh messages and telling me that right there. You know, and... And basically, when they find them, they're going to shut them down, you know what I'm saying, for uh, stalking and harassment. So remember that also, because you're not messing with somebody who don't know anything about computers. You know, I just let a lot of stuff slide to why I can't let it slide no more. But I'm not worried about no one or two or three. Or it could be 30 or 40. I wouldn't give a damn, because I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? So, like I say, you know, the way you kill people like that, you kill them with kindness. You know what I'm saying? Keep keep doing it. You know, more power to you. You know, maybe one day you will... Uh, you will make that uh that thumb grow bigger. But anyway, thank you very much, uh, Mona K, for that wonderful uh how can I say? That's not really a question, a statement, but at the same time, thank you for being woke. Now, number fifteen, lovely lady, can you make an email where we can send questions anonymously? Anonymously, I want your advice on something, and don't mind if you put it in a video. But I want to remain anonymous anonymous and just in in case yeah I, I can i can do that also because i have a few people that's uh that very private they don't want their name but they be having really questions like man this guy trying to kill me or this girl trying to put me on child support i don't say my name though so you know i just take and i read i respond back to them you know as soon as i can but yeah i can do that and the, and the email is uh at the back of my uh youtube page but i'll put i'll put a link for it uh, up under this video in, in the description so whoever want to send it anonymously they can you know uh, thank you also for that question uh lovely lady all right um uh, number 16 draconian what's up trey question how do you handle a relationship where you've been with a woman for seven years madly in love however she has daughters that hate on you especially the youngest who's 15 she's only 15 and she's cooling me being chocolate and my significant other high yellow so all the daughters except the oldest who's a little lighter than me it seems all the women in her family date white men with the exception of a handful. Now, my girl never dated white and loves my black ass wholeheartedly. However, her youngest daughter, 15, gives off a vibe of prejudice, like I feel from straight white people. I try to speak and she ignores me and I find that rude. I'm pro-black to an extent, so I notice and feel prejudice. This young lady gives off vibes worse than some prejudiced white people. I love her mom, so I try, but she blocks any type of communication. She dates only white boys and believes and behaves in such a coonish fashion. I'm lost because her daddy is blacker than me. Help a brother out with this. Now, one thing you have to understand is that, you know, at that age that she's at right there, she's very impressionable. But at the same time, has she shown, shown signs that she's racist toward her own color of people? Because you said it. That she dates only white guys. So where did she pick up this behavior from? Was it from somebody telling her uh, some about black guys? She had to pick this uh, type of behavior up from someone because she just didn't start out doing that. And also, uh, I had issues where you know, but that was a stepdaughter's and all that was stepdaughter. And uh, you know, you have to just put your foot down if you want to if you want to really try to you know make it work with the person you're with or if you really try and teach them something because they're going to test you but one thing about it if you can deal with that uh that uh hatefulness in her cause that's what it really is that hatefulness and that stubbornness in her then my advice to you is to make that relationship work but if you found that it's too much to deal with my advice to you also is to let that go and uh let her mom know look I can't be with you because of this right here because you don't know what that might lead to. She might say you tried to rape her one day. She might try to say you tried to beat beat her, beat on her one day. You don't never know if it's that already that type of vibe right there. And you say when you talk to her, she don't listen. That's that's uh not understandable, but I understand what you're saying because I'm sure 
me and a lot of people that's watching this video right now have experienced that right now with our own children uh more or less with somebody else's children because they feel like uh you're not their daddy you know i'm got to keep it real a lot of them tell you that and i'm like i'm gonna call my dad i'm gonna call my real daddy and what you tell them then you go call them matter of fact you go stay with them if you know you the one paying the bills there but make sure you the one paying the bills at the house though you know then you can say that you know you go you go stay with them because as long as you're up under my roof you're going to respect me as long as you're up under my roof and i talk to you you're going to respond as long as you're up under my roof there are rules and guidelines now if you can't abide by those rules and guidelines and treat me with respect forget who she date you know you got to go or I'm going to go. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you have to say. And you have to tell her mom that also because you got to put your foot down in these situations right there. But make sure you're on the right side of the track. And it sounds like you are. And it sounds like you really love this woman to even deal with this type of stuff right there. And um, I'll just say this. She's stuck on this color thing. It might be from what the TV programming in her head. You know, because it's not like when we was kids and uh, teenagers watching TV, even we was impressionable then. But now it's way worse because they show so much stuff, you know. And a lot of kids don't know how to differentiate what's really going on and what they see also. So just stay in there, you know, you know poke your chest out. You're doing a good job. But if it, if it feels like it's getting too overwhelming, I advise you to talk to the mom, come to some kind of understanding. If, if that don't work out, let it go and move on. But thank you, uh, Draconian, for that wonderful question. Number 17, Sunita Glover. Hi, Trey. What do you recommend to a woman who's been married 25 years and divorced for a little over three years about dating? I'm scared. I never really ever experienced dating. What to look on guard for? I'm alone but not lonely. Don't want to just settle for anything, you know. What I would look for also, if you're trying to get back in the dating scene, is number one, a genuine person, you know. Well, I'm not going to talk about the place because you can meet somebody at the grocery store and you might end up being with that person till you till the day you die or whatever. So I ain't going to sit there and concentrate on where you meet the person because that's not necessarily important. You can meet them in church and they can be the biggest devil. But one thing you need to be looking for and on guard for is, uh, number one, are they stable? You know, depending on their age, you know, are they stable? And if they're not stable, what do they do for a living? Do they have potential? You know, you got to have potential because, you know, love don't pay the bills. Now, unless you're rich and I'm not trying to question your money, you don't even have to answer that. You know, unless you're super rich and you can just afford to take care of a man, hey, that's fine. But at the same time, those are things I would look for. And also, is, is the person uh not on drugs? Because a lot of people on drugs these days. Is the person uh, a good person? How does he treat his family? How does he talk about his mom if his mom's still living or whatnot? All those things uh, you can calculate and you, you will get your your total and your total should be if this person is good or bad for you also and also do he ask you for money off the jump you know do he compliment you on how you look those little subtle things do he still open a door for you you know do he still tell you how beautiful you is it just depends on what it is that you're looking for and what do you want but you said you was married for 25 years and been divorced for three so i advise you to do just you know you said three years well that's that's enough time right there you know just Decide what you really want and go for it. You know, put your best foot forward and there's nothing wrong with looking for love. You know, people do that to the day they die. You have old people still trying to hook up with other old people. So don't be ashamed about age and how long you've been married or whatnot. You know, whatever you went through in the past, hopefully you're over that and you can go forward and you can have a better future with whoever you may find in your life. And thank you for that wonderful question, uh, Sunita Glover. Number 18, Courtney Sandy. Trey, I defiantly believe in protecting your heart but to your response do you think that expecting the bad to come out in someone or waiting for someone to mess up is relationship sabotage uh it's kind of like that because a lot of times you be with people and you know you really attached to them and you really got love for them but you know they just keep fucking up and they just keep messing up and you be like man you know what they gonna do next you know what i'm saying or you may be in, in uh very bad relationships in the past and you have people play play you cheat on you use you for money and sex or whatever else and you know and then you carry that into the next relationship thinking that it's going to be the same way and that right there would be a good prime example of relationship sabotage right there because you going on you know you, you're taking uh past baggage into the future and thinking that it's going to be better but one thing you have to do is let that go also you know because Whatever you whatever you keep expecting and what you think about the most will manifest in your, in your life. That's the power of the mind. You know, whatever you put out in the universe and what you concentrate and think about the most, it, what will happen in your life. I don't care if you think about being rich. You think about long enough, you'll get some money. You think about being broke, you'll be broke. You think about you sick all the time, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get sick. So my advice to you is to concentrate on the good, but also, you know what I'm saying, expect the bad also, you know, if 
you with a certain type of person because a lot of times you know people ain't good for you, but you hoping that they would change or you hoping that you could change them or the love you have for them could change. And at the end of the day, it, it's a 50-50 chance it will or it won't. So my advice to you is just, you know, if it's uh, past uh, baggage that got you feeling like this relationship is not going to work or having you feeling like it's a relationship sabotage because a lot of things that we went through in the past, then I advise you is to uh, work on that also, letting it go, let, let it go. You know, now if your relationship right now when you have doubts or this person giving you some kind of inkling that it's not working or something going on, then I advise you to reevaluate the situation. But thank you, uh, Courtney, for that wonderful question. Number 19, Gary Groves. Hold on. Trying to get my screen back right. Gary Graves, I mean. What made you decide to start your own channel? God, glad you did. None, nonetheless, love your videos, man. What made me decide to start a channel? But basically, you know, I just want a uh, balanced platform where I can just, you know, put my two cents in. I'm saying I know more than anybody else because, like, Neely Fuller Jr. said, the guy who I watch a lot on uh, YouTube, old, old guy, he was uh, Dr. Francis Quest Wilson mentor. If for those who, who know about her, the ISIS paper, she was a very powerful one but he was her mentor and one thing he said that you know he's uh, always constantly learning and this is an old man old enough to be my granddaddy and probably yours but the thing that i admire about him is from the day you born to the day you die you never stop learning you know if you ever find yourself in a place where you stop learning you know you you know no you know no, no longer need to be here let me say it like that because you know that's what this experience is about this life experience is about learning you know learning how to how to how to how to love one another better learning new things in life that's what i really feel is about and that was one of the reasons why i started my channel because not only i want to bring laughter i want to bring humor i want to bring real world issues but in the beginning you know i was trying to uh as they say, diver diversify too much and call a lot of flack for that. So now I just focus on certain things. But that's why I wanted to start my own channel. So basically, that I could put out there stuff about relationships and, uh, you know, just uh, your state of mind. Because that's what we need more than this word anything. That's why a lot of people don't have this common sense in a clear state of mind because so much confusion. You know, I'm not going to keep you entertained all the time with celebrity gossip. I'm going to hit you with the real. I'm going to hit you with the truth. You know, and that's one that's one thing you don't, don't normally hear from a lot of these people. And when you do hear it, you can tell it's not sincere. So that's one of the main reasons why I started that. And plus, I'm Aquarius. I like to talk. I like to I like to lead. You know, I just like to be heard. But anyway, thank you for that wonderful question, Gary Graves. Have a blessed day. Number twenty, Teresa Samuel. How did you get so fine and sexy? I get it from my mama. I get it from my daddy. You know. And uh, that's just it. It runs in the blood. It's, it's in the, the blood still works, like they say in church. Anyway, thank you for that wonderful question, Miss Teresa. 21, Sheila Carter. Hello, Trey. I live in Chesapeake, Virginia. And for three years, I've been looking for a good book publisher. May I please have some advice on what to do? Also, are there of any out where you live that you can tell me about? Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Sheila, uh, for that question, because I think you asked that question a few other weeks, and I was trying to look up a few things, but one thing I found is that you can go to findyourpublisher.com. I advise you to go there. It uh, depends on what your idea is. Now, don't sell them. Don't give people too much of everything, because you don't want nobody trying to rip you off. What I advise you to do, go to that website, www.findyourpublisher.com, and they can lead you to a lot of... Uh, sites and information and discuss with you which publishing package is the best for you and your options for as that go but for as where is some out here you have pars books and publishing bella publishing inc sharon cross publishing company Cara canyon publishing and uh some kind of strange but but t dante book publishing somewhere but you can look that up just type in uh, uh book publishers los angeles and you can see that also but for starters, what I advise you to do is, is FYP, find your own publishing dot com. That's what you should do right there. And just look really deep into that also because it seems like that you're good at writing books and you want to get your book out. Also, I'm thinking about doing that one day also. But anyway, I want to thank everyone for submitting their questions. Uh, hope I answered it to, to the best of your liking. And also, we're going to do it again. I'll upload the next video Tuesday and we will start the same thing over. And to all you all who submitted those questions, God bless you. Have a nice day. Till next time, I'm out.